to recover. Nearing the eight minute mark to go in a game that Hilltoppers are in front 50 to 49. This game has featured five first half lead changes and five second half lead changes. Paying long range right side, bad pass behind and wide of Sapp, who's coming from the baseline on the right wing to take a catch. Timeout, turnover on Murray State. 7.52 to go, WKU 50, the Racers 49. You're watching and listening to the Hilltopper Sports Satellite Network, produced for ESPN3 by IMG. Choosing a college is a major decision. So why did I choose WKU? Because at WKU, professors are experts in their field. I'm encouraged to study abroad. And make the whole world my classroom. And where I get real world experience, doing exactly what I want to do. And where I have all the tools I need to prepare for a successful future. It's all within my reach at Western Kentucky University. There's a big difference between a network and a community. In a community, you feel like you can do anything because those around you will support you every step of the way. Bluegrass Cellular is a community, a community with 4G nationwide coverage and all the latest smartphones and devices. That enables you to take the people who matter the most with you everywhere you go. Bluegrass Cellular, your community expanded. Randy Howe back on today's simulcast from uh, Diddle Arena. Hilltoppers up by 1, 50 to 49 to 752 left. This day in Hilltopper basketball history, the 21st of December, the year 1965, one of the greatest teams in Hilltopper history. They went 25 to 3 that year. On this date, Howe, they were so good, they played two games. They beat Tennessee Tech 78 63 and Eastern Kentucky 83 67 in a tournament that was played in Louisville. Two games in one day, two wins. That team only lost three games. Three points to Vanderbilt. They lost to Dayton, and then in the NCAA tournament, they lost by one point to Michigan, 80 to 79. In the last six minutes, Toppers scored, outscored Murray 16 to seven. Here's Pan to the right, point Hanson behind him to Prince of Jackson. Jackson back to the right, lobs it inside, ball batted away. Pat gets it back to come to double down, they back off. George into the paint with a left-handed dribble. A left-handed hook shot is up and in. Wow! A muscle move from Pant, and now it's a three-point Hilltopper lead, 52-49, and George Pant has scored 10. That was against the 6'8", Williams. Is a good shot blocker. Sapp thumbs the ball into Red Town, gets it back, works from left to right, comes in hard for a layup. Reverse acrobatic shot, no good. Williams tried to duck it on the rebound with two hands, missed him and was fouled. That Sapp is some creative player. Oh, he is very good. Shoots the ball obviously very well from outside and uh, doesn't hesitate to take it to the rim either. What an outstanding transfer that Murray State has picked up from Clemson and T.J. Sapp. And he, like the Hilltoppers and Princey Jackson, will only get to enjoy his services for this year and next. Here's Jarvis Williams with four misses in six tries to the free throw line. 7-12 left. A foul shot's good. By the way, uh, this state in Hilltopper history brought to you by Tony Hennon Construction. They're passionate about building and passionate about the Hilltoppers. Here's Farrell in, the 6'7", 265-pound strongman for Murray State, and leaving will be Dexter Fields, who for much of the game has been blanketing T.J. Price in man-to-man -man coverage, and T.J. has really struggled to score today with seven points. That one's on the rim and in. So Williams has cut the WKU lead to one, the 7-10 to play. It is 52-51, Hilltoppers. WKU on Wednesday won a three-point game at home against Southern Miss. Dox lost the ball off his left hip, gets it back to your half court. Kane's on him like a blanket. Deep now on the left side to Jackson. Moss guard again, now they switch off. Just cross court to Price. TG peering inside, trying to find somebody open. Dibbles to the foul line, backs in for follow away, 14 footer. Down! Price now has scored. 
nine. And the toppers still in the one, two, two zone press. It's really kind of slowed Murray's attack down, and they've been somewhat hesitant in attacking it. 54, 51, cross court pass from right to left, caught by Payne. Hesitates to dribble to the foul line for a 15 footer, rimming in and out. TJ Price rebounding. Alex to the Chris Harrison docks to the right sideline, and a dock slows it down. Price getting a stroke back. Now Sapp is going to guard. Price has scored nine points this half. Docks, left side, TJ firing a three. No. On line, just a little long. Payne rebounds, three on two for the racers. Stopping inside pass to Williams. He laid it up low on the iron, but he's fouled by Aaron Adeo, and Williams will shoot two. Crowd thought that Payne traveled before he delivered that ball. This is did not agree. Now Williams to get another crack at the free throw line. Racers are 8 of 14 from the free throw line, and uh, Williams just made two. Jarvis Williams has scored 18 points. Williams, it's up and in. 19 for Williams. He has a 25-point game against Bethel. 54-52. He shoots again and makes. See, now he has 18 now, they say. So 18 for Williams at this point in time. 6.03 to go. He likes me. I've given him two points if someone else scored. <laughs> It's a 54-53 WKU lead of one with six minutes to go. Inside Fant, tries to save the ball, throws it out front. It's grabbed by Price in traffic. He pops a three from the right, and yes, it's sir. down. 57-53. This match is WKU's biggest lead. 5.35 to go. T.J. Price with 12 second half points. Pressure broken, sap to the hole in front court, puts it up and in. Tough shot. He's some Blair. 57-55, Sapp has 22 points with 5.24 to go. DJ Price has scored these 12 points in seven minutes. Here's Dodge, front court. DJ's now scored in double digits in 21 of the last 23 games. Jackson has the ball at half court against Moss. Nearing the five minute mark to go in a game. Deep on the right to Price, right side Dodge. He holds the ball with 10 of the shot clock. Way out top, not a price in a red towel. He's looking inside to settle the shot clock, keeping it to Princey. Princey wants to go one on one, goes to his left. 14 footer left side. Two! Got a little help defense, Murray, from Payne, but it wasn't enough. Jackson goes up, gets his 12th point of the afternoon. Payne in the lane, dumps a little Farrell wide open, put it up, no good. It bounced out, but a foul as Neil Top is leading by 4, 59 55. You had better get back defensively. With Murray State, is up, get it up and down quickly. Foul on Price is first. Does it seem to you like the Hilltoppers are having to work awfully hard to get a shot, and Murray is just getting it yeah. as soon as they get down? Like a football game where one team scores in three minutes and the other team scores in ten. Yeah. The timing is such a thing. Here is Farrell. He has missed two free throws. He has two points. He averages seven. He shot 66% from the field in junior college last year. And he misses that one. Rostov in for the tops. Odeoe will leave. Odeoe with four rebounds today in a block shot. WKU by four. This matches their biggest lead. They had a four-point lead a couple times in the first half and once this half. Murray State led by 14 at one point in the first half. Darrell, that one bangs out. He's zero for four. Tops up four with the ball, 4.35 left. And here comes Chris Harrison Docks, meandering across the timeline. The crowd to it against Cameron Payne. That's freshman against freshman. Docks crossing over twice. Payne bumping. A lot of contact. They both go diving to the floor, and the ball rolls off the chest of Payne and out of bounds. Well, the count was on as well. He was closely guarding Harrison Docks by Payne, and he never penetrated the hash mark, so it's really kind of a fortunate turn of events for the Hilltoppers if the ball's out of bounds to them. 18 on the shot clock. You get the most sports on any screen with TWC Sports Pass. That is Time Warner Cable. 424 remaining, second half. WKU looking for their 11th consecutive non-conference home win. And right now they've had the battle from 14 down to lead it by 4, 59, 55. This game has 10 lead changes, five in each half. Dox makes the inbound pass to Jackson, and Trenchy will now run the show with 15 seconds on the shot clock. 
Bat sets a pick, he dribbles right to left and stops. Jump pass to Fan and the key Watch the left with the dribble, bumps, coming in! It's good, he's got a count on a driving shot. Left of the lane, Bat puts it in, and WK leads by six. 61, 55. Fan off the dribble, puts it up and in, as he was fouled by Jonathan Farrell. It's really a nice move under control by George Fant. Four Hilltoppers now in double figures in this game. Murray State with two, Sapp with 22, and Williams with 18. So the, concentra the scoring's been somewhat concentrated. Fant misses his first free throw of the game, but there's a lane violation on Murray State. The Toppers have really feasted on second chance opportunities at the free throw line the last couple games. Happened three different times in the uh, Southern Miss game on Wednesday. Tonight. Now this is the second time here this evening. Fan with 9 for 10 Wednesday in the win over Southern Miss. After he missed that free throw, he turned to look through the crowd where his mother and father are at. And he misses that with hard, but it's tapped back, pulling out front. So he missed the free throw, but it was batted back to him, and WKU gets it again. Credit Trincy Jackson on that because he's the one who went up and challenged that that sky ball and poked it over to George Fant to get another possession for the toppers. Jackson yo-yoing the dribble, right side wing dribble, deep the docks with 17 seconds on the shot clock and three, three to play. Cameron Payne on docks, a windshield wiper dribble deep on the right to Trincy, fake the shot, comes into the paint, leaning because of a prayer. No good, it was not answered. Fant tipped it up and did he go over the back or was he held? He was fouled. Foul on the racers. Fant asserting himself. We have reached our final media timeout of the second half. WKU now up 6, 61-55 over the Racers. And you're watching and listening to the Topper Sports Satellite Network. Produced for ESPN3 by IMG. This is Hilltopper Basketball. Look at you. You're looking all hot on that brioche bun, baby. That's not weird. It's not weird at all. Wendy's Bacon Portobello Melt. A new buttery brioche bun and rich portobellas in a melty cheddar sauce. Now well, that's butter. The Kentucky Lottery is showing up in places you never expected. Introducing Kino, the exciting new game that draws every five minutes with lots of ways to win. Go to KYLottery.com and find out how and where to play Kino today. At U.S. Bank, we help first-time buyers, growing families, and empty nesters move from their home into one that's more fitting. Wait, I'm sorry. Did he just say you might be moving? We are. We raised three kids here. It would be perfect for your family. Which that means you guys are moving. Oh, this would be a great first home for you. Okay, let's talk <clears throat> about the Can yard. I take it from here? Sure. U.S. Bank offers flexible terms and a great rate on a home mortgage for whatever stage of life you're in. Call to apply. Or just come in. Okay. okay. All of us serving you. Let's get started. Okay, I'm, I'm first. U.S. Bank. All right. Look at you. You're looking all hot on that brioche bun, baby. That's not weird. It's not weird at all. Wendy's Bacon Portobello Melt. A new buttery brioche bun and rich portobellas in a melty cheddar sauce. No, that's butter. It is 61-55, WKU by six. That foul prior to the timeout was on Jonathan Farrell. And Farrell's had a difficult day. Fouls out with just one basket, and he missed every one of his free throw attempts. He was 0 for 4 at the line. That was the 18th foul on Murray State, so George Stanton will be shooting a 1-1 one one with the Hilltop for advantage now of 6 points, 61-55. Let's say hello to our radio audience that are simulcast here in the Bowling Green, Kentucky area, listening to 100.7 FM, Sam Radio. Fant with a one and one. He just missed one. And give me after that, but he gets the front end of this one and one. 13 for George Fant. The Hilltoppers in the second half are shooting 50%, 14 for 28. At one point in time in the game, they were 6 for 23 and had missed nine threes in nine tries to get it started. Fan hits the second one, he scored 14. A very balanced uh, Hilltopper attack. And now WK has moved the lead to 8 with 3.38 to play. And here comes Payne for Murray State. And here come the fans in Diddle Arena cheering their Hilltoppers on to a defensive stop. Payne lobs it to Moss, who's been held in check. Dibbles to the left wing to the left baseline and fouled by Price. 
That was a dribble drive by Jeffrey Moss, who averages 13 a game. He scored 10 or more in four straight and has scored 20 twice this year.